woke up over here. I started waking up in the world. And then I faded to the bad motherfucker color. Now my eyes just said, ah. We've seen things that really make you want to freak. I mean, blow your mind and what they've been through in the bush and plus what they have to go to back in the world. They can't face it. They're ready just to get down and start another civil war. Just like the chapter in uh, Elridge Weaver's book called Lazarus, come forth, come home, bro. Wake up, open your motherfucking eyes, and peek, motherfucking <laughs> Keep it, hear it, listen to the black soldiers in Vietnam, schooled in the arts of war as no generation of blacks in American history. They are fed up with dying in a war they believe is the white man's war. They are coming home determined to get their share, even if it means turning to violence. Black soldiers who died in wars before were forgotten. Did you ever hear of black soldiers who fought the Indians for the pilgrims? who died at Valley Forge, who turned the tide of the Battle of New Orleans, who were massacred in the Civil War, who led Teddy Roosevelt up San Juan Hill, who drew the praise of France in World War I, and who commanded tanks for George S. Patton. This is Wally Terry. For more than two years, I was in Vietnam with black soldiers of today. When they first came to Vietnam, they were anxious to prove themselves in the most integrated war in American history, sharing the leadership, sharing the foxholes, and sharing the plastic bags. Blacks account for only 11% of the American population, but in Vietnam, up to 22% of the dying. Then the war soured. Black progress at home began to fade. The mood changed. Then came a second war. Black against white on a double battleground. Racial slurs, Confederate flags, cross burnings, knifings, killings. The black soldiers you hear in this album are real. They were recorded in Vietnam. Their names are omitted and you will understand why. Their language and anger may frighten you or amuse you. You may not like what they say. You may not believe that the conditions they relate are real, but they are. And their anger is growing to bases and countries around the world, like here at Tinshaw, the Navy base in Da Nang. Times are changing. The black man is not the only one who feels that this war shouldn't be going on. We don't have any business here. The reason why I think that we shouldn't be over here, simple reason is because we have a war going on back home and we should first clean up our own backyard before we try to clean up someone else. I don't think we should be over here because it always was the black man fighting the yellow man for the white man and it shows in cases where the white man is with the white man. Why didn't he drop the bomb on Germany when he was fighting Germany instead of dropping it on Japan? He don't drop anything that harmful on the people that consider the same as he is. So why should we be here fighting a war for him, for him to profit off? And shit, the money we spend in here could be helping our people back in the States in more ways than one. I volunteered to come over here. I came over here to get raided and get me some more dough. I give a heck about the Vietnamese any way or another. I can take them or leave them. So personally, I came over here for me. I didn't come over here for the United States, nobody else, just for me. When I get myself financially secured, get my degree, then I can help somebody else. But till I do that, I'm going to help me. I used to work over here at Tenshaw Gallery. Buku Vietnamese women, you know, over there working for me. Now, for me to say something to them, it's just like talking to a brick wall. But, you know, I say something to them, and they'll go up and tell the man. They'll cry to the man, and the man, you know, he just act as though I'm not even there. Yeah. Vietnamese will come first before you do. You're supposed to be looking out for their pride. Now, I'm an American serviceman, you know. I'm over here supposed to be fighting this war for him helping him out and shit, you know, I'm just up here on the bullshit tip anyway. Hell nah, I don't think this is a black man's war. Used to go over to the USS Tripoli, that's the uh, fucking ship. All the brothers on the ship had to get their hair cut, and if they didn't get their hair cut, we got put in the brig. And what they did, they when they called a brother with, a, with an afro, they just took him down to the brig and cut all his hair off and threw him in jail. 
And here there's all, all, all these beasts, motherfucker, walking around here with their hair looking like goddamn girls. And we can't wear our hair motherfucking three inches long. The motherfucking regulation is three inches. And most of the brothers can wear afro, the hair don't be motherfucking two inches. And why we got to get our hair cut? That's what I want to know. What do you think of the Black Panthers? I think it's the best thing the Negro got going for him because I'm going to join him time I get here get back there with a black man. Well, my home is in Michigan, but I'm settling in Frisco, so I'll be close to him. I ain't going no farther than Frisco, so I'll be there for every meeting and every burning. Out of 12 months in Nam, I think I owe some to my people. To me, I think the Black Panthers is what we need as an equalizer. Man, I have right to speak his own opinion. Hey, man, what the other fuck you, Dixon? Don't be interrupting me, motherfucker. Wow, man, why can't I say my mother? Here, eat the mother, eat it. Take it, man. Take the thing, man. Look at the people. Look at them. We supposed to be conducting this manner. Why don't you tell the dude to lay dead then, man? What I was saying is, I think the Black Panther is what we need as an, an equalizer. The beast got his KKK, plus he got his good points, too. As far as the Black Panthers is concerned, it gives them something to fear, just as they've given us something to fear all these many years. Well, when the Panthers first started out, from what I understand, they was to keep the beast from fucking over the people when they demonstrate. And the Hongas made the Panthers as violent as they are. And I figure any time you got the fucking KKK, we have been kicking out people's ass and burning crosses and fucking over our people. And then you start fighting force with force. Then the motherfuckers start hollering. They got to be coming to inspire and a whole bunch of shit like that. But you understand, I think the Panthers, I would join them and I would help kill all these honky motherfuckers because do unto him before he do it to you. And as we the fuck around long, that's what he gonna do. He done did it everywhere else and he getting around to you. And he say looting. I mean, just not the problem of looting. He looted our fucking people from Africa. He brought us here, looted the fucking land from the Indians and then worked your motherfucking ass for nothing. And now when you start fighting back, striking back, kicking ass, then the man wanna holler, you motherfuckers be nice, send a couple of times and quit you from riding. Strictly, I go for riding, but I don't go for going to the store looting without no heat with you because if the man shoot at you, you got to shoot at him back because I ain't going to steal no $10 shirt and have a man shooting at me. But if I take a $10 shirt and the man shoot at me, I'm willing to shoot back at him and put some holes in his motherfucking ass because you paying, you're a taxpayer and you paying his motherfucking salary and you don't pay him to shoot at your motherfucking ass. You paying him for protection. Look here, I got to go now, but uh, before I want to say this, so you asked the question, do you think the black man belong over here? Well, for one reason, I think he do. The black man has to prove himself equal in every field. He got to be able to prove to himself that he can do what the white man can do. We got a bigger wall back home, sure. But you know you got to sacrifice to get anything. We, wait, wait a minute, like I said, man. I'm not, I'm not talking about kissing no ass. I'm making a statement, man, about the position. You got to prove yourself equal to everything. The black man today doesn't have to prove anything. We are a race of people. We have our culture, we have our background, our ancestors. Why associate at all with the beasts? We have nothing in common. Perhaps we can live with them, but we must live according to our origins. We were the first people here. Civilization began in Africa. We want what is rightfully ours. Because of racism, many blacks at Tenshaw got more punishment, more time in the stockade than did whites. I talked to a black lawyer who spent a year defending them, Navy Lieutenant Owen Heggs. I think that as the military represents in microcosm the society we live in, black people today in the military, from PFC through 05, represent the black movement in our country. Either they say, hell no, we won't go, or, yeah, I got to go, and I'm here, but I'm not going to take no licks on me. I'm not going to come 12,000 miles from home to be shit on by some girl in the EM club who's been hanging around with a bunch of southerners. She doesn't know me, and I don't know her. But she calls me a nigger. Why? Because somebody taught her. The young black people in this war, in Vietnam now, because they are the ones who represent a new generation, they are the ones who represent a new train of thought, they are the ones who ain't gonna take no more shit. They are the ones, you see. So I think the problem exists because we have a new generation come a long way from home when they don't wanna come a long way from home and they gotta take the same licks on them they gotta take back in Philadelphia and Detroit and Watts and Huff and Harlem and Bedford-Stuyvesant and they're not ready for it. 
and they're not going to put up with it. White people haven't changed. The same white people in the military today were in the, in the military in 1930 and 1940, basically. What has changed, I think, is the black population in the military. Angered by Confederate flags flying over the battlefields, black Marines in Da Nang designed a flag of their own, green for youth, red for the blood they shed, and black for Africa. I talked to them at their barracks, the little ghetto. In April of 1968, the day after Martin Luther King died, there was a mass flag raising, and the flags that were flying were not American flags. They were not black power flags. They were Confederate flags. And they flew for approximately three days, and nobody said anything about it. Well, the brothers got together. When we presented this fact to the operation line, Within, I would say, about four or five hours, these flags were down. Now, I don't know if it was a threat of our retaliation or the fact that uh, we made the presence of these Confederate flags known. Like, if a man can walk, ride down the road and can't see a 15 by 20 foot flag flying over the area in an open view, I think the man is blind and he shouldn't be over here in the first place. The first time I ever really beat the beast was when I got to high school. I got thrown in a factory school. One of them brain factories, because the motherfucker tried to throw all this shit in their head. He's supposed to come out a genius or some shit. <laughs> yeah, so what if I go to the Naval Academy? If I go to prison, I go to Yale or Harvard over there. I'm still a motherfucking black man. I'm gonna look, up, look at that up at that motherfucker. Who he think he is and shit like that, you know what I mean? You know, my mom used to whip my ass to make me go to school, you know what I mean? I'm glad she did that, you know what I mean? Oh, this is what my old man told me when I dropped out of college, you know, and told him that I was going in the suck. He said, son, you aren't bulletproof. What are you fighting for? You know what I mean? This motherfucker just beat up and down on my ass, you know? But I feel it wrong, you know. This this is my great mistake, you know. I'm almost been years after I get out of this motherfucker's hand for it, you know. I'm gonna have to regroup and retract and just get recomposed completely. Tell me this, uh, what do you think the white man should be called? Devil. Beast. 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 Everything he does is in a bestial fashion. What do you mean by that? What do I mean by that? The way he acts, his very nature is beastly. This man has been a beast all his life. This shit has been in him from, from constantly fucking over people. He's got it down to a fine art. In the Philippines, um, the beast went over there and told them that, that the brothers, at midnight, the brothers grow tails and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when I was in Paris Island, I had a drill instructor. And this man would come right out and say, you're a nigger. There's only about three or four colored guys in the platoon. He I sit down and talk to the, the white guys about the black man. And because I didn't smile at what he was saying, nor did he holler, you don't like a nigga, bitch. You don't like a nigga, bitch. When I first got here, I used to sit in the mess hall and just rap. And just, and everybody heard me, you know. Next thing I know, this man's talking treason. That's what he said to me. Why should I have to go to child, sit at the same table, eat with some beast to say, this nigga this, this nigga did. But I tell you, if one of them ever said table me and break trial like that, he'd get my knife in his chest. You think there should be more brothers in, as officers in the Marine Corps? Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, brothers. Sure. Yeah, Depending that's sure. upon the nature, yeah, yeah. real make brother, sure not no brother, brother to help the other brother. Not yeah. no Negroes, but some real black yeah. brother. Do you want integration when you get back to the world? Like the, the this, 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 this is just between integration and having the same privileges. I want the same privileges. Just like the man said, well, we're going to let you eat in this uh, place right here, you know. Well, 20 years ago, you couldn't. Now, look, you can eat here. Well, thanks a lot. Well, you know, let me say thank you a whole motherfucking lot. I really appreciate it. How do you know that I really want to eat in the first motherfucking place? I grew up in a community in South Baltimore called Cherry Hill, where 40,000 black people live. I'm going to tell you how flaky my brothers are. We had a councilman out there that's been trying to get elected for the last 10 years. A brother! 
been trying to get elected for the last 10 years. It ain't nothing but black people out there. And you know, this man can't even get elected. They'd rather elect this motherfucker named Friedel or Pulaski somebody, you know. Wow, 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 wow. 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 You start snatching on all these old flakes, you know. Come here, flake, and all these old TTs. You can't get Tom terrific. Come here, Tom. Get them all in a circle. And all these old so-called Negroes and colored people, and you just say, look here, uh, people, you can't call them brothers. You can't say brothers, because they haven't, they aren't in that frame of mind. They're not in that frame of mind. They have me mo mo the first idea to peep. They have me eat, open that motherfucker up. You want intermarriage? No. For what? No. What? Why don't I like interracial marriage? For one thing, I don't dig a beast brown because she's always fronting. Sisters front too, but they front in a different way. You know what I mean? They front in a different way. When they front to get something. But a beast brown, she just front to be fronting. A sister knows what it is to be noticed. She's got to go out there. She's got to get that bleaching cream. She's got to get that hair. She trainer. knows what it this, means. This is what it took five years ago to be noticed. She just had like, to get that hair straight. Like she had to get that bleaching cream to get that skin a little bit lighter. You know, it don't work this way. The right. sister now, what's she doing back in the world? She ain't using that bleaching cream. Put a water on and keep on And she puts that water on, she don't get that straightening that cone. That straightening cone, cone hit the garbage can three years ago. And that hair is just so beautiful. It is defiant. It stands up against the wind, the rain, the elements. It is out there. And it don't like need a nothing. It don't need nothing. It just stands up there just as proud as can be. Going back to what you said about marrying a, a gray bra. She don't know nothing about when you used to get out there on Saturday morning and, you know, do this little thing just to get your child, bro. Or when you fade to the movies and whatnot. And, uh, you, you hopping on, on, you know, let's get this little nickel dime thing going so we can see who go to the movies. She don't know nothing about that. But she always had, she didn't have to go to no goddamn movies or skating ring, you know what I mean? Or don't know what it means to eat hot dogs every motherfucking Friday, you know what I mean? Knowing what you gonna have every day of the week, this was your meal, bro. She don't know nothing about that. You don't share any common or mutual interest whatsoever with her, you know? You start talking about, well, this is the way I grew up, so-and-so, I did so-and-so, he and there and everywhere, and I slid here and I faded there, and I tipped on up here, she don't know nothing about it. You in a completely different world, bro. If you got back home with a riot broke out, would you join it? Hell, yeah. yes. Why? Why? Tell you what, bro, why did the, uh, just like uh, this brother rapped the champion last year, the chaplain tried to cool us down. Sit down, brothers. Don't, please don't start no shit. Please. <laughs> and then, bro, said, chaplain, you had your motherfucking Boston tea body. Why can't we have our rights? Is there any difference? Wow. Check it. Is there any difference? That's your, that, I, that, I, I, I ain't even going to say no more. I joined you? Talk about yeah, the match. Why was it here to make this? Why? I have nothing in the clean. first place. I have nothing to lose or win. They you know, if, if they kick and crack his ass, I'm going to get a hip kick a few ass cheeks. Because I'm doing what my grandfather wanted to do and couldn't do. You know? I'm getting even with him for the things, for the times he raped my grandmother and my sisters and my aunties when they lynched my grandfather. When he took their 40 acres, that goddamn mule he's supposed to give him. Mule died, he's still a slave, right? So I'm getting even with him for that. So they got a ride going, hell yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in the middle of that. If I get killed, fuck it. Black Navy and Marine officers got together one night in Da Nang. Doctors, lawyers, helicopter pilots, tank commanders, and combat sergeants. If I was a snuffy, I wouldn't fight. You wouldn't fight? Why should I fight? Why should you fight? For prejudice in America. I'll tell you one reason why you better fight, because somebody's shooting at your big ass. And All if right. you didn't, then you would go home without your ass, right? All right. Talk to him, baby. Talk on. Talk on. Time out here. No, wait, wait. I'm, I'm talking. talking. Now, you, you, you pull me in this little, this little jive I, I conversation. There's no value placed on a man 
at least it wasn't to me. I didn't give a damn whether he was white as nor as black as is my shoes, as long as his trigger finger was active and he didn't have arthritis. Okay, you do you say you're not gonna fight because you know you was a PFC. I tell you you're gonna fight to save the young gunner's ass. And you if you didn't, you wouldn't save your ass. The average young Negro comes over here, he's defined of criteria. It gives you the high power or black power sign. This don't mean shit to me, because I'm a professional Marine. I judge people. I can raise my fist and put a glove on it. Didn't take a whole lot of common sense to do that either. But what does it mean? He don't know. But tell him to go out here and blow up somebody's house or break out a five-gallon can of ass on, burn it down. He's ready. ready. Everybody laughing, but he's ready. No. Yeah, he's damn sure ready. But what is he doing it for? He don't know. I best serve my country and best serve the Negro people by setting an example because I'm not in a position to to uh, instruct. So I go out there in the bush and I do the thing that I'm most qualified to do. I can beat that bush bar none better than most. So the Negroes that work for me, they're not as qualified, but I give them that tool that the good man gave me, that little bit of knowledge. I give it to them with all the energetic effort that God has given me. I didn't sit around and say what the Negro people were going to do, what we are going to overcome. I give them that bit I had accomplished myself. All the white people look back, they, they didn't like them, but they goddamn sure had to respect them. They had to give them that quarter. They didn't ask for none, but the man had to give it to them. The ones down third man who sit on this smoking pot going to sleep on the line and they were getting the other people killed, I wouldn't have given them nothing but a dose of lead either. I'm a doctor in a sense. <laughs> I'm a qualified surgeon. You got no blame. I ask the good Lord, yeah. let me be a good husband. Give my Negro people what is expected and let me die like a Negro. Proper. Now, I've seen so many Chuck dudes get out there in the bush, die crying, screaming like an old woman going through the menopause. And I, I'm telling you the truth, but I've seen some brothers sit there and know they were going to die, and let God send my mother to hell if I'm lying. Know he's going to die. You know what the cats say? Look here, baby. I, and I sit there and tell them, you're going to make it. Now, your mother got holes in them, look like a piece of Lindbergh cheese. <laughs> and I sit there and tell them, you're going to be all right. And you know the cat look up, and the whole platoon standing by, baby, I know I'm going to die. I'm going to die like a brother. Soldier, motherfucker. That's yeah. all I could tell him. He didn't go out crying. But let him chuck dudes he hitting the foot. Oh, hell. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Nah, we got to get him four or five medevacs to keep these motherfuckers quiet. That's the only thing I have. What was the uh, original question? You fight the hunkies war. Why did you I, go I'm out like... here and fight for the white man in Vietnam when you should have been back home fighting for the brother in the ghetto? I tell the cat. First of all, they raising more hell than I'm raising over here, so I should have asked them to come over here and help me. <laughs> Everybody's vocation, advocation was not to march the street and fight the white man in the States. Some of us, uneducated as they may be, came over here to fight and set an example for what the Negro is qualified to do if he has to do it. Well, first of all, I consider myself a professional. I am a professional killer. I am a professional Marine. I am a professional. I love to kill. That's my duty. Now, if I was a bookkeeper, they told me to keep books. I would keep books. If I was a doctor, they told me to go out and, and perform surgery, I would go out and perform surgery. But I am a Marine officer, an aviator, a killer. If you are a lawyer, would you defend a white man? Under what circumstances? Irregardless of the circumstances, you've been hired as counselor. Yes. Will you defend him to the best of your ability? Yes. Okay. You said he would defend, defend a white man. Sure. Then why ask less of me and my job as a show? Did you determine his color? That's not the question. The question would be, irregardless of whether the white man's war and you are here, I'm going to do it because it is a profession. It is not a profession. All it right. is an occupation at best. Okay. Maybe, maybe a preoccupation, but not a profession. Okay. Is yours a profession? Oh yes. What is the Yes. 
put in his mind any less. The difference is, my friend, that when you talk about the word professional, you talk about the word welfare. When you talk about the word welfare, you talk no. about the good of individuals. No. And your profession, as you put it, has absolutely nothing to do with nothing. anybody's welfare the except good, your own. The good and somebody's order somewhere who tells you, go kill him.